The Oklahoma newspaper, The Oklahoman, would publish a story on June 28, 1969, titled It's a Cracked Puzzle. Subsequently pulled from their archives, some astute researchers, however, have managed to track down this amazing article, detailing an impossible discovery. It pertains to the excavation of an ancient floor, a tiled area which covered a truly vast distance, as if it was once the highly finished floor of an enormous structure. What is astonishing regarding this floor, however, is the date that countless specialists have concluded upon. The age of these tiles is simply baffling. According to the modern dating techniques used, this floor was laid well over 200,000 years ago, using a tiling mortar containing currently unknown elements. Delbert Smith, president of the Oklahoma Seismograph Company and past president of the Oklahoma City Geophysical Society, accompanied Derwood Pate, an independent petroleum geologist, in an exploration of the site. They finished their studies by stating that they were both very satisfied that it is not a natural earth formation and that it is, indeed, man-made. Smith and Pate even took core samples to make a microscopic investigation of the material makeup. The discovery of two holes through the rock strata heightened interests, and when measurements revealed the two holes to be exactly 16 and a half feet apart, or precisely one rod, they were convinced it was a deliberate, artificial placement. The stone tiles were found to have been made from Permian limestone, laced with quartz grains. Geologists who focused their attention on the unusual flooring were all at a loss to explain the origin of the formation. John M. Ware, an Oklahoma City geologist, said, It simply cannot be explained within the field of geology. We need an archaeologist to give a final opinion. However, its age and origin may remain a mystery unless an archaeologist can be persuaded to take on the project soon. Just 20 days after these astonishing finds and subsequent realizations, construction workers moved in on the area, quickly demolishing the enormously ancient and vastly important floor, building a foodstuffs warehouse in its place. Pate said that the formation, 100 feet by 60 feet in area, was rapidly becoming a tourist attraction. People began flocking there and taking pieces of the rock away, he said. Just who built this ancient floor? Why did they build it? And was it really over 200,000 years old? Judging by the way this discovery was buried, it is certainly a possibility. In 1996, Italian mineralogist Vincenzo Di Michele spotted an unusual yellow-green gem within one of Tutankhamun's necklaces. The jewel was tested and found to be made of a type of glass known as Libyan desert glass. The interesting thing regarding this, however, is its origins. To this day, no one seems to be able to explain how it formed. No trace of a crater has ever been discovered. An ancient meteorite, or indeed outer space object, scorching across the skies of Egypt is the basis for many religious teachings within this once amazing ancient civilization. They associated the objects and the flaming tails during such events with that of a phoenix, and the collected items, presumably nearly always meteorites, were then hammered down into wares. Nine small beads, stored at the University College London's Petrie Museum, dated to around 3200 BC, were found in necklaces along with exotic terrestrial minerals such as lapis lazuli, agate, and gold. They are some of the earliest iron artifacts ever found, and archaeologists have confirmed that they came from outer space. Meteoric iron is much harder and more brittle than copper. Quote, they were rolled and hammered into shape. This is a very different technology from the usual stone bead drilling, and shows quite an advanced understanding, showing the metalsmiths knew exactly how to work this rather difficult material," said Thilo Rarin, a University College London professor of archaeology. When American geophysicist John Wasson was consulted regarding King Tut's strange gem, he curiously linked the event with one within an extremely remote forest of Siberia, an event we have covered before. Quote, when the thought came to me that this required a hot sky, I thought immediately of the Tunguska event, he told Horizon. In 1908, a massive explosion flattened 80 million trees in Tunguska, Siberia. And whatever landed there over a century ago is still there. 
and it kills any living organism which settles above it. And what is most interesting surrounding all of this is the ancient Egyptian accounts of what they did with a rather peculiar, rather special type of object that was, at one point, retrieved from the glassy sands of Libya. A particularly different object, which they called a phoenix egg. That hieroglyph state was secreted away within a secret chamber deep within the Great Pyramid. We have covered before the hypothesis that these stories etched in hieroglyphics may be far older than the Egyptian culture which may have preceded it. Yet the question is clear. What could this phoenix egg be? We recently covered the astonishing archaeological discoveries located within the modern-day Turkey. We discussed the unexplained ancient ruins of Gobleki Tepe, clearly a remnant of a far more ancient, far more advanced civilization than academia would ever allow contemplation of. Additionally, and the focus of the last video, the other ancient gem known as Norsen Tepe, a highly complex, thus highly advanced, ancient temple, whose contents indicated no less than 40 additional re-inhabitations of the structure after the original construction now conveniently hidden under several meters of water, submerged during a dam-building operation. Why this operation was undertaken, or indeed why this site in particular was chosen for flooding, may become apparent with our next place of interest. It seems that some of the sites within Turkey have revealed some extremely well-preserved, extremely ancient artifacts, left by numerous as yet unknown civilizations. And although these finds have seemingly been concealed from mankind, fate is seemingly on our side. Ironically, a site of complete opposite characteristics, having not been touched or re-inhabited for untold millennia, has also been unearthed within Turkey. Alachahoyuk, a site on the surface perceived to have been a primitive archaeological ruin dating back to 2350 to 2150 BC, over 4,000 years ago. And yet, upon deeper exploration, an analysis seemingly undertaken too late for academia's dating has shown that the site possesses evidence of the same lost technology, or more specifically, advanced knowledge of stone construction found at many other ancient unexplained sites around the earth, like Saxa Heuermann, a site we also covered previously. It must be clear to everyone that academia's dating of these sites is not accidental. Was the dating too hastily concluded? We would assume that a dating of over 4,000 years is now difficult to accompany with such advanced knowledge of stone carving and construction. Just how old is Alachahoyuk? And the same question as always, based on the unexplainable knowledge involved in its creation, who could have built it? We have recently covered many of the amazing archaeological ruins which can be found within modern-day Turkey, and it would be foolish of us not to devote a small fraction of our investigative minds on what is probably the most enigmatic of them all. Placed high atop a rather suspiciously shaped mountain known as Nimrut, someone, at some time within our very distant past, went to tremendous efforts to create what academia have concluded was some sort of tomb. This, however, absence of any king or queen's remains to date, or indeed any other form of evidence to support such claims. Said to have been constructed by the Kamajini Kingdom some 5,000 years ago, the enormous stone statues are placed at a height of 2,230 meters above sea level. Because of the site's clearly tremendous antiquity, coupled with the astonishing achievements involved in creating it, many people attribute the site as the eighth wonder of the world. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing regarding the ruins, is the fact that Mount Nimrut Da is one of the only places on Earth where a number of sunrises and sunsets can be observed. Every year, thousands of local and foreign tourists come to Nimrut Da to watch the sunrise and sunset. Was this particular anomaly found at this specific location? a factor in the decision to place this mysterious structure at the top of Mount Nimrut? And if so, how did a culture more than 5,000 years ago understand this? The name Nimrut is a relatively modern one, dating back only to the Middle Ages. 
In Armenian legend, Haik defeated the biblical king Nimrod and buried him in these mountains, meaning the real name of the mountain at the time of the monumental structure's construction remains unknown. According to academia, quote, the tumulus or ceremonial mound at the site, which is 49 meters tall and 152 meters in diameter, was possibly built to protect a tomb from tomb robbers, since any excavation would quickly fill with loose rock. The statues appear to have Greek-style facial features, but Armenian clothing and hairstyling." End quote. We find it interesting that academics would happily mention the amazing characteristics included in the build. The hidden chambers beneath being booby-trapped with multiple tons of loose gravel, placed atop to quickly fill any tomb robbers' attempted burrowing tunnels, stifling their attempts to loot the site, yet say with their second breath that the site was somehow looted sometime within antiquity. The site was excavated in 1881 by Karl Sester, a German engineer assessing transport routes for the Ottomans. However, his claim of a tomb have never been validated. Subsequent excavations have failed to reveal the tomb of Antiochus, the supposed character who resides here. This, however, has not deterred academia to continue to strongly argue that the site is indeed his burial site. Who built the ancient monumental structure high atop this mountain within Turkey? Why did they build it? Was it indeed constructed, like Alaja Hoyuk, by a far more advanced civilization than we are led to believe? The more we learn regarding these ancient sites, the more such a proposition becomes a real possibility.